Welcome to your digital classroom. I am Sanjeev Kevi. You are watching my channel, The Eureka. Good morning, students. I hope you enjoy your days. Today, let's learn the story, The Little Match Girl. The story, The Little Match Girl, is written by Hans Christian Andersen. He was born in Denmark on 2nd April 1805. This story reflects the Victorian society where the rich enjoyed all comforts and luxuries of life, whereas the poor led a very miserable life. Many children were orphans and homeless. Let me briefly summarize this story. The little match girl goes out for selling matches on the eve of New Year. It was dark and cold. She went out for selling the matches, but no one bought her matches and she did not earn any money. She was hungry. She was shivering. She sat down finally in the corner formed by two houses. She did not want to go home because her father would beat her if she went home without selling anything. She sat down there and lighted a match to warm herself. As she lighted the uh, match, she saw the iron stone. And then she lighted one more. And then she saw the roasted goose. Then another, the Christmas tree. And her grandmother, whom she loved very much. Let's learn from the story what happened to this girl at the end? Now I request you to open the textbook. The Little Match Girl. It was bitterly cold and snow was falling and darkness was gathering for, the, for it was the last evening of the old year. It was New Year's Eve. It was cold, snow was falling, it was going to be dark and it was on the eve of New Year. It was on the 31st of December. In the cold and gloom, poor little girl walked bareheaded and barefoot through the street. The little girl walked through the street bare head, bare foot, in the cold and in the dark. She had been wearing slippers, it's true, when she left home, but what good were they? She was wearing slippers when she came from her home, but they were of no use because they were too large in size for her to wear. In fact, they were of her mother and it was not suitable for her. They had been her mother's, so you can imagine how big they were. The little girl had lost them as she ran across the street to escape from two carriages that were being driven terribly fast. The girl had lost these slippers while she was running to escape from the carriage driven very fast. It seems the street was very narrow and there was no place for her to give side for the carriages. As a result, she was running very fast and she lost her slippers. One slipper could not be found and a boy had run off with the other saying that would come in very handy as a cradle someday when he had children of his own. 
she lost one slipper and other a boy took away and ran away with it saying that it would be useful for his children as a cradle for them as bed baby bed for them so the trillier walked about the streets on her naked feet which were red and blue with the cold the little girl walked barefoot through the street her feet were red blue on account of the cold in her old apron she carried a great many matches she had a packet of them in her hand as well she had a bundle of match boxes in her apron and a packet in her hand as well nobody had bought any of from her no one had given her a single penny all day nobody bought match box from her and nobody gave her any money in fact these children were going out for begging under the pretext of selling match boxes and nobody bought it nobody gave her any money she kept long shivering and hungry the picture of misery poor little thing she was shivering she was hungry and she was the picture of misery her picture showed the poverty stricken condition of the children of that society the small flakes fell on her long golden hair which curled so prettily about her neck but she did not think of her appearance now snowflakes means feathery ice crystal so fell on her face her golden hair and she did not bother about her appearance lights were shining in every window and there was glorious smell of roast goose in the street for this was new year's eve and she could not think of anything else now the houses were lit with the lights and she could get the smell of the roasted goose in the houses but she did not have any of these things the rich enjoyed comforts of life delicious food whereas this poor child did not have food nor protection from cold she went about selling the match boxes she hurried down in a heap in a corner formed by two houses one of which projected further out into the street than the other but though she tucked her little legs up under her she felt colder than colder she was tired of going through the street finally she sat down in a corner formed by two houses and she tucked her legs under her as she felt colder and colder huddled means sat down with the closed legs she did not dare to go home for she had not sold matches and earned not a single penny her father paid sure to beat her besides it was cold at home for they had nothing but the roof above them and the wind whistled through that even though the largest cracks were stuffed with the straw and rags now the girl had no courage to go home because she had not sold any match boxes and she had not earned any money if she went home her father would beat her in addition to it it was cold at home because they had nothing but roof above them and again 
cold breeze blew through the largest cracks that was stuffed with straw and rags straw means hay rags means torn clothes so there was no protection at home it was cold at home father did not take her up father did not love her and she longed for the warmth love of her father and protection from the cold but she would not get it any of these from her home therefore she sat down there and bear the cold of the day her thin hands were almost numb with the cold now her hands were uncovered therefore they became senseless numb senseless if only she dared pull just one small match from the packet and strike it on the wall and warm her fingers she wished that she could take out a one match stick and strike it and light it and then she did it so she pulled one out the scratch now it is spluttered and burned she took out one match stick and scratched it stuck it and it is spluttered burned with the sound and it had a warm bright flame like a tiny candle when she held her hand over it as it burned it was warm and it looked like a tiny small candle but what a strange light it seemed to the little girl as if she was sitting in front of a great iron stove with the polished brass knobs and brass ornaments but to her surprise it was strange that she immediately felt that she was sitting in front of an iron stove with the polished brass knobs and brass ornaments the fire burned so beautifully and gave out such a lovely warmth she felt the fire was burning brightly and gave her warmth from the cold oh how wonderful that it was the child had already stretched her feet to warm them too when out went the flame the stove vanished there she sat with the bird match in her hand she stretched out her hands and feet to warm herself meanwhile the stove was extinguished light was extinguished and the stove disappeared vanished means disappeared and there she sat with the bird match in her hand so here the imagery of iron star symbolizes her longing for warmth from cold her longing for the love of her father and the other members of the family she struck another it burned clearly where the light fell upon the wall bricks became transparent like ghosts now she took out another match stick and struck it burned very clearly and the light fell upon the wall and the wall became transparent like a ghost ghost means a transparent fabric she could see right into the room where a shining white cloth was spread on the table and she could see from there what was in the house because on account of the light the wall of the house became transparent there she saw 
a white shining cloth was spread on the table and the table was covered with a beautiful china plates and in the center of the table there stood a roasted goose and the roasted goose was stuffed with the prunes and apples steaming deliciously and she saw in the center of that table a roasted goose which was stuffed which was filled with the prunes prunes means a dried plum it was stuffed with the prunes and apples and steaming deliciously the delicious smell came out in the form of steam what was even more wonderful was that the goose hopped down from the dish waddled across the floor with a carving knife and fork in its back waddled straight up to the poor child and it was strange all of a sudden she noticed that the goose the roasted goose which was on the table jumped from there came out and walked towards her with the spoon and the fork at the back and came to the little poor child then out to bend the match nothing could be seen but the thick cold wall immediately the light was extinguished and she could not see anything except cold thick dark wall here the roasted goose symbolizes her desire for food she was hungry she wants to have food and thus it symbolizes her longing for food she wants to enjoy the food just like the rich people enjoy the food the rich enjoyed delicious food whereas these poor children could only ask bare for it they could only long for it but they had never got such food so it is shows her longing for her food she struck another match and suddenly she was sitting under the most beautiful christmas tree she took out another match stick and struck and it burned all of a sudden she noticed that she was sitting under a beautiful christmas tree it was larger and much lovelier than the one she had seen last year through the glass door of the rich merchant's house and this christmas tree was much larger and lovelier than that she had seen the previous year in the rich merchant's house a thousand candles lit up green branches and gaily colored balls like those in the shop windows looked down upon her she saw that the branches of these trees were lit with candles and many colorful balls were hanging on the branches of the tree as she had seen in the shop the little girl reached forward with both hands then out went to the match and the little girl tried to catch that ball immediately the light was extinguished and everything disappeared the christmas tree was dis- uh, disappeared the many candles on the christmas tree rose higher and higher through the air she saw that they had now turned it into bright stars now she noticed the candles were going up in the sky and they these candles became stars in the sky and she saw that they had now turned into bright stars one of them fell streaking the sky with light and one of the candles fell from 
from the sky with the light. Now, something is, someone is dying. Such a little girl, for her old grandmother, the only one who had ever been good to her, but who was now dead, had said, whenever a star falls, a soul goes up to God. The girl, so, a candle falling from the sky, like the star. Immediately, the girl was reminded of the story told by her grandmother that when a star falls, a soul goes up, someone dies. She struck another match on the wall. Once more, there was light. And the girl stood to her old grandmother, oh, so bright and shining, looking so gentle, kind and loving. Granny, cried the little girl. Then the girl struck another match. Immediately, she saw light was very bright. And her grandmother stood before her. The light was bright and shining. Her grandmother was gentle, kind and loving. Who was the only person who loved her very much. Grandmother loved this girl very much. And she, remind, she was reminded of her love. She was very kind, gentle and loving. Oh, take me with you. I know you will disappear when the match is burned out. Immediately, the girl cried out, Take me with you, my grandmother. Because I know when the light is extinguished, you also disappear. Just like the ant tower disappeared. Just like Christmas tree disappeared. Or the rusted goose disappeared. And she did not want to lose her grandmother. So, you will vanish like the Einstein, lovely Ross Goose, and a great glorious Christmas tree. Then, she quickly stuck all the rest of the matches she had in the packet. For, she did so want to keep her mother, grandmother with her. Now, immediately, she took out the rest of the matchsticks from the box and lighted them all together and held it in her hand because she did not want to lose her grandmother. She did not want her grandmother to disappear just like the Christmas tree or the roasted goose or the iron straw. The matches flared up with such a blaze that it was brighter than the broad daylight and her old grandmother had never seemed so beautiful, so stately before. Now the matches burned brightly. Its flame was brighter than the daylight and her grandmother looked very beautiful and majestic ever before. She took the little girl in her arm and flew with her high up, oh so high, towards the glory and joy. Immediately, she felt that grandmother took the child in her arm and flew high in the air. And she enjoyed that glory and joy, the heavenly joy. Now, they knew neither cold, nor hunger, nor fear, for they were both with God. She did not have any fear, as both had gone to God to enjoy heavenly life. In simple silence, the girl died. The girl died happily in the company of her grandmother who loved her, who took care of her in the past. But in the cold dawn 
the corner formed by the two houses, sat the little girl with the rosy cheeks and smiling lips, that frozen to death on the last evening of the old year. Next day, when people came out to the street, so the child was frozen to death on the eve of the new year. When they were celebrating and preparing themselves for the new year, this little child was frozen to death and she sat there in huddled form in the corner formed by two houses. The dawn of the new year rose in the huddled figure of the girl and they saw the dead child sitting in the corner of the house early in the morning. She was still holding the matches. Half packet had been burned and she was holding the match sticks in her hand and the mastics were burned half. She was evidently trying to warm herself, people said. People thought she was trying herself, herself to warm as it was cold. It was the thought of the people that she was trying to warm herself with the mass sticks. But no one knew what beautiful visions she had seen and in what place of glory she had entered with her old grandmother into the heavenly joy and gladness of a new year. But people did not understand that how happily she died and how joyfully she went with her grandmother to the heaven and she did not have any fear, any cold. She, whatever she wanted, that whatever she wanted to have here on earth, she will have it in, there in heaven. And the people did not understand the mystery of her death, the joy of her death. The people, the rich, were callous towards the poor. They never cared for the poor. And this, the society shows the callous attitude towards the poor and often children. Here, the story urges us that we should have empathy and sympathy for the poor. The story actually describes the misery, the hardship of the poor and orphan children of Victorian period. Yet it is the universal truth that we find it everywhere in the world children who are often and homeless suffer in the cold. They are hungry. They are they need a miserable life. And the story urges us that we should be sympathetic towards these children.